Well, I've rebuilt it and I put the fifth element in there. I did a little different on my electrolyte this time. I used distilled water and baking soda. I used four and a half teaspoons of baking soda. So the 200 milliliters of water. But I put it in a blender and blended it up real well, mixed it in real well. And then I heated it up to just below boiling to make sure that everything was completely dissolved. I got a pretty fair gas flow. Take a look at take a look at our bubbles here. The water's pretty warm. I would say it's probably at a hundred degrees right now. I'm pulling right now I'm pulling about twelve and a half amps. Almost thirteen amps is what it looks like. So <clears throat> anyhow, I think the fifth element didn't really help us a whole lot. I'm going to be working with a measuring device. I went out dumpster diving the other day. Came up with some bottles. I'm going to make myself a little uh, measuring device here so we can actually tell how much we are producing. I'm just following along with some of the other fellows that I see that are experimenting in this water is getting a little cloudy. I must not have got the plates quite as clean as I thought I had them. I washed them in vinegar and uh, water. But it is showing just a little bit of the latent copper that was left over from the original uh, test. Our production seems to be going along quite well one small leak over here on the uh, connector. See the corrosion on the clip here? That was from setting down in the water when we did the first test. Now we got pre pretty good bubbles coming out of there. But still yet, we're not at one liter per minute. A friend of mine I was talking about running a 12 horsepower Briggs and Stratton off of this. Well, a 12 horsepower Briggs and Stratton is about 30 cubic inches. Is about what it is. Whenever you calculate it out to get 100% HHO to operate the engine, you need to produce about 15 and a half cubic foot per minute to make a 12 horsepower Briggs and Stratton run on pure HHO. But that was not my intentions of building this particular cell. Anyhow, there it is. Distilled water, bacon soda. Our cell temperature is climbing a little bit. I don't know how warm it is. I don't really like the reaction. I don't know if we can see this or not. Let's see. Uh, the fifth element actually has reduced the, uh, the fifth neutral element has actually reduced the amount of flow that we were getting. That has some interesting uh, effects on the entire flow. Get a little bit focused a little bit better. If I do it this way. We're up to 14 amps now. Cell is heating up. About four minutes into the test. That's good. We are getting some stronger reactions. As you can see on the outside edge there. The bubbles are doing pretty good. Pretty good flow rate. I don't think we're quite at one liter per minute, but we will test that. We'll test that in the next go around. I got to go get a couple of other parts. Most of this stuff is stuff that I had in the junk box. 
or in the salvage parts box, as you may. So anyhow, I'm not real happy with the fifth element. It looks like that was not the way to go. So I think what we're going to do in the next build, I've um, gone out and procured some nylon screws. We're going to put the neutral elements, absolutely neutral, from one another and do it that way. I might even reduce some of the uh, elements. So anyhow, stay tuned. I hope I don't blow myself up. Uh, don't try to compress this stuff more than about 25 PSI because you definitely are playing with something really dangerous whenever you get it up to those pressure levels. Uh, we have to figure a storage medium for HHO, which would be kind of like uh, acetylene, has to be stored in a ceramic cylinder inside of a steel cylinder suspended in acetone. So I think that that would be some method of storing this stuff without building yourself a real explosive development here. So, anyhow, the cell is really at the operating temperature. Seems to be working quite well. But not what I want. I want to see a more continuous stream of bubbles coming out of the bubbler. Now, I realize I'm pressing against all of that water, the weight of the water there. So, I'm actually producing a little. Oh, maybe an eighth of a pound of pressure behind our back pressure. I'd have to measure it to see what we got. So there's a, there it is. She's running along at about 13 amps at 12 volts approximately. I want to keep the numbers kind of kind of standard, easier to crunch. So anyhow, there we are. That's with the fifth element added. And I've insulated the, uh, uh, I have insulated the uh, two center elements, two solar driven elements. So there we go. Seven minutes into the deal. The temperature, probably 120 degrees inside. So, 14 amps. Um, that's what we're getting out. I want to keep it at 10 amps if I possibly can. That's something that's a very doable situation for most uh, automotive uh, alternators. Some of these guys are running at 20, 25 amps, which is a heck of a load unless you have an uh, uh, extended capacity alternator on your vehicle. The only thing you're going to serve in doing is just burning up your electrical system. So, anyhow, 14 amps, 12 volts, approximately. And we're probably getting just pretty healthy bubbles up. Probably getting some, uh, maybe 250 milliliters per minute. We'll test this on the next go around. I'll be seeing you. Bye.